What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you the first ABC deck profile of 2022. Yes, it's been a while since I updated this deck, but I wanted to show you guys how you can play ABC in today's format in the brand new year. I hope you guys do enjoy and if you guys did and do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can make it happen. The goal for 2022 is 10,000. I think we can do it. I believe in every single one of you. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, off to the video. Now, just before we get started, I do want to say that one thing I truly believe is ABC right now is better going second. You do want to play this as a going second deck, not necessarily an OTK deck, but this deck does break boards. And there's a lot of decks that just lose to a single hand trap or to a single Kaiju to the point where I think this deck is just way better going second because going first, the boards that you make are not necessarily the strongest. You don't put up boards like Sword Soul. You don't put up boards like uh, like Pendulum that could put up DPE, Baron, etc., etc. So this deck, what it does really well is it can break those kind of boards, and then you make boards that control the game state. All right. So first thing we're gonna get started here is with Triple A Assault Core, Triple B Buster Drake, as well as Double C Crush Wyvern. This is the best ratio. You don't need three C. C is really the brick for you, so you don't want to play a third C. Then you're playing one Union Driver, of course. Now. I really wanted to play this at two because this card is one card that you really don't want to draw. You really want to have it in your deck. So the reason I wanted to play it at two was because just in case we drew one, we would have one still in deck, but I still decided to just play it at one. I think the odds of drawing it are very little. It is the one quote unquote brick in your deck. Now it's not necessarily a brick. It's not horrible in your hand. It's just not the best card in your hand. You'd rather have it in your deck anyways, but it is just at one and we're playing triple galaxy soldier. So we were going to play originally I was playing, I should say two Union Driver and two Galaxy Soldier, but I decided to max out on Galaxy Soldier because Galaxy Soldier is really important in today's format. To be able to make something like Infinity after you break your opponent's board, this way you can have your own board and you're not just breaking your opponent's board and ending on nothing, right? You really wanna be able to break your opponent's board and then make your own board and potentially OTK your opponent, right? So Galaxy Soldier does give you that. So that's why I wanted to play three. You really wanna draw them as fast as possible. Then we are playing double Gamma Seal. Again, we're playing a going second deck. And the reason I like to play Gamma Seal, now you you can sub this out for any kaiju let me say that you could sub it out for Godarla, which is really relevant right now because sometimes the uh, tri brigade uh, bird up uh, variants like to play barrier statues so you can sub it for Godarla. you could even sub it for something like jizakiru because jizakiru is a light and this way if you draw it and you don't need it you can pitch it with a galaxy soldier so you can even sub it with a jizakiru there's just so many different kaijus any kaiju you really want to play you can play i just like to play the gamma seals over here and the reason for that is just because it's the lowest attack one so it's the easiest to run over and it's just the easiest to get around but you could also argue with the kaijus is a lot of the time you won't even be attacking into them you'll either be banishing them off of the abc buster or you'll be sucking it up with the infinity that you make with galaxy soldiers so you could argue you can play any other kaiju but i do truly believe that you need to be playing kaijus in today's format two kaijus is enough the reason for that is there are cards like dpe that are really hard to out and they're just very annoying and can very consistent so that's why just kaijuing a dpe gets rid of it uh then you have cards like dragoon dragoon's not as prevalent this format but when you know if that card does become prevalent or if you do end up facing against a dragoon it can be hard to beat so of course a kaiju just gets rid of the dragoons um and then there's just so many other boss monsters there's so many other annoying things even against a sword soul matchup sometimes if you hand trap them which we'll get into the hand traps in a second but if you hand trap them and they end on like a worm monster they can set the trap card that like pops a worm monster to pop two cards you control i forget what the name of the trap card is but it's a trap that pretty much is an icarus attack pop one you control to pop two your opponent controls and uh that card's insanely powerful that card's really really strong so there are times where i've legit seen my sword soul player or sword soul opponent end on a worm monster in like two back row and i'm like you know what i'll just kaiju his monster and this way i'm safe from that trap card and then i can just go off right so that's why kaiju is really really important in today's format and to begin off the 2022 year so i really like that then we are playing triple ash and triple valor ash is just the most rogue generic hand trap it hits everything every deck will get hit by ash in some way shape or form yes it's not the strongest hand trap in the game anymore but uh yeah so this beats a lot of rogue beats a lot of meta just the most important hand trap then we have valor valor is very important in today's format and that's specifically why i'm playing it in this deck build because in today's format valor just stops the sword soul completely like if your opponent normal summons a sword soul monster even with the 10 year 
experience and you just veil the soul soul monster they can't get a token sometimes they're just kind of stuck on like okay well i can't really do anything from here right so unless they open a bunch of extenders even the tenies themselves though they don't really get synchros on the field right so they can do the tenies all the tenies stuff they want but as soon as a soul soul monster hits and you veil it they're kind of in a weird sticky situation right and if you think about any other deck this format really Veiler is very powerful, so I do like the Veiler. On top of that, I should mention it is also a light, which is good for Galaxy Soldiers. So you open an extra Veiler you don't need, boom, pitch it for Galaxy Soldiers. So I really, really like that. And since we're on the topic of, of hand traps, I should just put these here as well. Triple Imperm, this makes more sense as a hand trap. But yeah, Triple Imperm as our hand traps. This card is also insane, just like Veiler. It's just really, really strong in this format. Going first, going second, this card's insane, so you want to be playing this. This also helps you break boards. So a lot of people, I'll say this, and, and you might already know this, so if you guys are watching this and you know this, good. But there's a lot of people who don't know this, so I really want to share this information with you guys. People like to shotgun Imperm. Sometimes people will have Imperm in their hand. They'll see their opponent normal summon a monster and be like, okay, Imperm. Like, I'll just Imperm you right away. And then if their opponent has extenders, that Imperm doesn't really matter. Your opponent will continue on to make their board, etc., etc. If you see a situation where you're like, okay, my opponent can probably make a board through a single hand trap. You can wait till they make that board. So let's say you're going up against something that's like meta right now is like Sword Soul, right? Your opponent puts up uh, the three synchro monsters that they usually put up on their board, right? You can just hold that Imperm and then on your turn, go on your like standby phase or your main phase. You can start your turn by activating that Imperm and then you're pretty much negating one of their effects and now you essentially not broke their entire board, but you broke that effect, if that makes sense you know what i'm trying to say here so you can hold the imperm and use the imperm on on your turn because if you use your imperm on your opponent's turn and it doesn't necessarily stop them completely then you kind of wasted that imperm but you can hold that imperm and be like hey i have an imperm in my hand now and a kaiju and he has two negates on board he has two big boss monsters on board i can imperm one of them kaiju the other one boom the entire board's broken you know what I'm trying to say? So I just wanted to explain that to you because a lot of people I feel like are using Imperm incorrectly or not necessarily incorrectly, but mo not the most optimally. And I really want to show you guys how to play this deck at a competitive level. And you, those like little things um, when you're playing help you to win games, right? So that's why Imperm is really, really strong. And I'm sure a lot of you guys already knew this. If you guys did, sorry for that whole rant, but I just did, really did want to explain it. And then we're playing Triple Power Prosperity. Now this card is expensive. I'll be honest though, you cannot sub this card out for any other pot card. Like there's no other pot card that you could sub this out for. So I will say this, if prosperity is a little bit too expensive for you, all right, I'll just pull this out real quick. If prosperity is too expensive, don't worry. This deck is already very consistent as it is. You don't necessarily need a pot card. What you can do is you can play cross out designator. Now, the reason you can play cross out is because instead of losing to some hand traps, you're already playing a lot of different variety of hand traps, stuff like Ash, stuff like Veiler, stuff like Imperm. You're already playing three different hand traps. So you can just play cross outs instead of the prosperities. Okay. Now, another card that I should mention is pretty expensive and I know we're getting out of order here, but I'll bring it up now is the Forbidden Droplet. Forbidden Droplet is another card that's insanely powerful in this deck, specifically because you can send your pieces from the field to the graveyard to negate cards your opponent controls, and then your pieces will get their effects off. So that's why Forbidden Droplet is insanely powerful. But again, if you guys do not have Forbidden Droplet, I always like to give you guys budget options. And the, the easiest thing is just Forbidden Chalice, to be honest. So I do want to say that here because it is really important that you guys know that if you can't afford don't get me wrong this game should be accessible to everyone and i truly believe that this game should be accessible so if you don't have your hands on droplet and i know they're an expensive card just play chalice instead if you don't have your hands on prosperity don't worry just play that cross out instead cross out is really really good it stops the ash stops veilers stops imperms from your opponent okay so now your plays are always gonna go off and by the odd chance that your opponent also has cards like chalice in their deck you can also cross out chalice you can also cross out random other cards, right? Again, this is just budget options. Crossouts are still kind of expensive, but way more budget than Prosperity. So I'll say that. So I just wanted to give you that. But most optimally, you guys do want to play Triple Prosperity and Triple Droplet here. Then we're playing, of course, Triple Unauthorized Reactivation. This card's insane for the deck. Pretty much a pseudo Union Hanger. One Called by the Grave. One Called by the Grave pretty much because you guys can see that I'm not playing Crossout in the main deck. So we're just playing the One Called by the Grave. Just try to sack it. And it's also really, really good in general. This card destroys DPE as well because if they go DPE, activate their effect in the graveyard it'll activate right you can just call by the grave the dp in the graveyard and then it just gets rid of the dp so this card is really really strong as well then you're playing triple union hanger as well as one terraforming of course union hanger is very important in this deck and then we're playing triple evenly match in the main deck now this one is very important okay this card is very very spicy you don't always need your battle phase with this deck because as long as you can break the board you can most of the time set up your own board and you control the game state from there so you're not trying to otk your opponent and i think this card is just better than dark ruler in so many situations 
one against the back row matchups against any back row matchup evenly match is just infinitely better than stuff like dark ruler you can argue lightning storm could be in here as well but lightning storm most of the time if you draw it later in the game it's not that great whereas evenly matched is just always going to banish your opponent's cards this card is insanely insanely powerful yes lightning storm could be another alternative but i just really like evenly matched destroys the back row matchups destroys the front row matchups this card is insane so that's it for the main deck i know i kind of rambled on i just really wanted to go in depth with how to play abc in today's format and this is just the best way to play it for the main deck now we'll move on to the extra deck real quick it's, it's pretty self-explanatory let me clear this it's kind of annoying me but uh let me explain this so we're playing triple abc buster dragon yes we're playing triple not two usually i would want to play two but we're playing three mostly because of prosperity a lot of the time i will banish one of these uh so yeah i'm playing three if you're not playing the prosperity you could consider cutting one out and playing something else in but three buster dragon for sure one infinity one nova one dweller these are just infinity nova for sure dweller could be any other rank four that you think is relevant i think dweller is probably the best one in today's format that you can make so i really like dweller then you have underworld goddess now if you guys haven't watched some of my abc combo videos in the past underworld goddess is insanely powerful in this deck it breaks so many boards it's so easy for you to put up a board with four monsters or three monsters plus like a link two or even two monsters plus a link two and then you just take any one of your opponent's monsters for free this card helps break so many boards it's so so powerful one axis code of course this deck can make axis code like there's no tomorrow one apollo this deck can also make apollo pretty easily as well actually in your combo most of the time you will be making apollo then you have of course the generic stuff stuff like unicorn stuff like phoenix a platinum gadget helps you extend through hand traps so that's why i like platinum gadget one cerberus this card could also be swapped out for any other toolbox card this is just a toolbox card one card that's really really important though is your ip mascarena this card you always 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 go into this card is insanely powerful in this deck making it with your abc buster dragon boards are insane because what happens is on your opponent's turn this is what i was talking about with the underworld goddess on your opponent's turn if you go ip so let's say you make a board of ip and abc buster dragon just those two cards okay on your opponent's turn you can abc banish a card or whatever then abc will banish itself to summon the three pieces back then you can use those pieces plus ip plus a monster your opponent controls to make underworld goddess so you're breaking boards you're disrupting your opponent and you're making your own boards with ip masquerina this card is insanely insanely powerful you need to be playing this in this deck this card's broken in this deck and then you have uh clara and rushka of course this is again just for mostly when you break when you're in really awkward situations you need to get a b in the graveyard uh this is the way to do it to be honest it, it's not the best card but it does come up here and there so yeah you are playing one clara and rushka uh most of the time though i'm gonna say i'll be honest this is just gets banished off prosperity if i look at my hand and i'm like yeah i'm not gonna need this my hand's good enough then yeah i'll just get rid of the clara i'll just banish clara and rushka but yeah most of the time this is just getting banished but it is there for the those awkward situations that's it for the deck though i hope you guys did take something away from this deck i tried to be a little bit more in depth um especially with my how to play videos i really want to be in depth with why i play the card choices that i play i also try to give you guys some more budget uh, options and more budget cards that you guys can play instead now i will say crossout designator is still like a 30 ish dollar card uh, if you guys don't have your hands on crossouts or can't buy crossouts it's okay you can still even go more budget than crossout there's so many options just play whatever you think could be viable in today's format heck you you can even play more hand traps if you wanted to there's nothing wrong with more hand traps you can play stuff like bell is pretty good this format you guys can play even ogres ogres works really well because ogre is a light monster for galaxy soldier so yeah just so many options i, I love this deck so much I'm, I'm super excited to be showing it off so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy i do want to say that i did go a little bit in depth with this profile but i wanted to do that on purpose because anyone who's new to abc anyone who's new to the channel especially because it's the first profile of the year i did want to go a little bit more in depth and explain why the deck is played the way it is and the card choices that i made and i wanted to give you guys some budget options as well but if you guys did enjoy don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel here's to a 2022 new deck profiles new content coming to you so often and like i said earlier the goal for 2022 is 10,000. i know we can make it happen let's get the 5,000 first though let's get the 5,000 first. thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace